For this module, we're going to again look at the human resource management function, uh, but now we're going to be taking a look at performance appraisals um, and how we change positions, uh, move jobs around within the organizational structure. So we've looked at the staffing piece, um, the selection piece, and now we're going to be looking at the performance appraisal piece. Um, now you'll see if you haven't experienced this already, um, you may experience this once you start working out in the, the healthcare field or any field you decide to, to go and start a career in, um, the performance appraisal piece uh, can, can be quite challenging depending on the size of your organization and the number of employees that report directly to you. Um, oftentimes people have a lot of anxiety, both uh, the employee and the supervisor when it comes to the appraisal process, um, especially if there's you know, bad news or an uncomfortable situation that you have to work to address. Um, but the last thing you want your employees to experience is kind of a surprise during this often, uh, you know, once a year performance appraisal process and, and how you can work to simplify that and kind of cut down or reduce any surprises both for you as the supervisor and your employee. Um, work to try and have regular meetings, you know, once a month, kind of touch points, check-ins, um, so that there are no surprises when it comes to the formal uh, performance appraisal. So these are just a few of the common methods um, that we can use for performance appraisal. The comparative standard, um, this is more uh, like when, when you get graded on a bell curve. Um, it, it's used every now and then. Uh, you have the graphic uh, rating scale, which is um, just like a list grading, and this is probably the most common form you're going to see out there. But one that's really picking up some momentum um, that you're starting to see a lot out there is the 360 degree feedback. Uh, and this is where the employee um, kind of puts a survey type tool out there uh, that they, they get um, questions answered about their performance from their boss, their peers. Um, supervisors may have uh, their subordinates answer questions about them. Um, and, and like I said, it's really starting to gain momentum. So I want to encourage you guys to, to take a quick look at this video. It goes a little bit more in-depth uh, in on the 360 um, degree feedback. And you'll also see another video um, on the next slide that I want to encourage you guys to, to make sure to watch. And two more appraisal methods that I want to make sure we mention, um, critical incident assessments and the BARS, um, or the Behaviorally Anchored Rating Scale. Now, I particularly like using the BARS um, because it takes it from two different aspects regarding performance overall, but also an employee's behavior. So you could have an employee who has great performance, top-of-the-line performance, but their behavior was maybe quite atrocious. Um, and, and behavior, you know, think about it from a customer service standpoint. Behavior can be paramount to what we do as a profession um, and the care that we deliver to our patients and ultimately our customers. So I'd rather have somebody that maybe we need to work a little bit more on their performance because we can always improve performance. Um, behavior change, on the other hand, is a little more difficult to change. Um, so I like the bars because it looks looks from both aspects, from behavior and performance. And when you start conducting appraisals, um, just kind of keep this in the back of your mind. Um, you want to use that standardized form um, across the board for all your employees, but you have to make sure that your ratings are quantifiable. Um, so you want to make sure you have some evidence that can support uh, your rating scheme, and you want to make it as objective as possible. So think about it in this terms. Um, when you have a paper due for class, uh, what should happen is um, 
the instructor for that class should grade on a rubric. Uh, so, so you as the student know exactly the points that you're going to be graded on. Um, it is consistent and as objective as possible across the board for all students. We've taken out as much subjectivity as we can. Um, and it should be the same way for your, for your appraisal rating. So your employees should know what they should be striving for to receive that top tier performance um, indicator. And it should be quantifiable across the board. Now, like I said before, um, employees should never, never be surprised with the feedback that they get on the, on their appraisal reports. If if employees are surprised, um, it's likely that they're not getting consistent feedback. Uh, so this is where your monthly touch point meetings can come in handy. Um, you can kind of catch little problems while they're you know little and fix them before they become big problems and, and can be very impactful. Um, and your job overall, you know, at any rate, is to help your employees grow professionally. That's one of your main objectives or should be one of your main objectives as a manager or a supervisor or somebody serving in that type of role is to help your employees grow professionally. You want them to have this as a career and how do you make them uh, become better professionals because if we can make them become better professionals, if we can encourage them and help them grow professionally, think about the domino effect that's going to have out to our patient care. Now one of the things I like the most, um, I, I thought it was hugely beneficial and probably maybe not everybody will agree, but I really like the self-appraisal um, because it, it's a time for your employees to see how, you know, see if you guys are on the same page as a manager and employee in terms of performance. Um, they get to see what you as a, as a manager are going to rate them on and evaluate them on. And it's a time for them to kind of do a little self inventory. Um, oftentimes we're a little bit harder on ourselves on self appraisal than we need to be. Um, so overall, you know, gives you, gives you as an employee uh, a chance to see how you're going to be critiqued and what you're going to be evaluated on. Um, and you as a manager to kind of see if, if, you're on the same page as your employees if you're, or if you're kind of just out in left field. Now here's where it can get challenging. Um, when you have the face-to-face -face meeting, uh, the appraisal interview, it's not always fun, I'll be honest with you. Um, hopefully you won't have to experience this a lot in your career, um, but it can be challenging when there's an issue that you need to address. Nobody inherently likes sticky situations, uncomfortable situations, or conflict, um, but it's just one of those things that you'll have to learn to manage through as a, as a person serving in that type of supervisory role. Um, it, it can be a little challenging, not always fun, um, but there are times where where you get to you know take time to really praise your employees and really recognize them for doing a great job and kind of use that as a morale booster. Now a couple different techniques on how we can work through this appraisal interview process. Um, you're not going to use all of these for one person and it's really going to um, be based on the employee that you're conducting the interview with um, because not, you know, not one, it's not a one size fits all. So you can have the tell and sell. Um, you can have the problem solving where we focus on, you know, specific problems and and how we can work through them. Um, the tell and listen and listen and tell, um, kind of you tell me what you think the issue is, I'll repeat it back. Um, but the one I'm going to focus on and we're coming up in the next slide is the management by objectives. Now some people don't really believe in management by objectives. Um, I really like it. I feel like um, it gives you kind of that criteria that you need to work for. You know, what's my objective for this job? What do I need to be working towards? Um, if you have taken strategic planning or you will be taking strategic planning, we'll talk a lot about objectives um, in that class as well as our quality improvement class. Um, but, you know, this is an opportunity for you to really work with your employees and stress to them um, not only how important their job is, but how important their job is overall to the organization. And it's a chance for you to 
relate objectives that they need to accomplish as part of their job back to the overall organizational mission, vision, and value statement. Um, back to their job description and to the detail. Um, you know, so here is what we brought you in to do and, and here are the objectives that you need to meet. So management by objectives, I really, really like it. Um, I think it's a great way to kind of keep everybody on the same track um, and it gives you that overall goal to shoot for as an employee and helps you keep a, keep a pulse on what's going on as, as a manager or a supervisor. Now just a quick note here, want to make sure to, uh, let me scroll back one, just want to make sure to point out here that last bullet um, about giving an employee a copy of their evaluation. Um, this is really company dependent, so be careful here. Um, some companies consider this proprietary information um, and won't let you give out a copy, so make sure to always check with your HR uh, director, HR, management, HR manager first, um, because Sometimes you can, sometimes you can. It's really company dependent on giving out employee evaluations. Now let's go back. We've mentioned a couple times about um, your job as, as a manager, as a supervisor, is performance development of your employees. And here's where that managing by objectives will really come in. Um, for performance development, uh, it's your job as a manager or supervisor to help your employee create sort of that performance development plan, that personal development plan. Um, and, and you have a, a, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about this. The employee can kind of create that performance development plan, um, bring it to you during your monthly meetings if you decide to have those. Um, and you can talk about it, you and the employee can sit down and create one together, but it gives you a chance to relate this back to their, uh, their objectives that you created in their appraisal. And oftentimes, you know, make sure to note that last bullet. Um, we don't always need to assume that the weakness in the job performance is the fault of the employee. Remember back when we talked in our quality lecture, it's often a process problem, not a person problem. So management by objectives here will really help you kind of dig down to the root cause and see that maybe a performance issue with an employee or a weakness in their performance may be an overall system issue and not the fault of the employee overall. Also just a quick note here um, and something to really just kind of keep in the back of your mind in terms of feedback to your employees and communication, um, stressing how important communication is. Performance issues can often be linked to, to poor or weak leadership. Um, so make sure that you're giving that feedback to your employees um, you know, consistently, frequently. Uh, like I said, I would suggest a once a month touch point to just kind of get to know your employees. What are their struggles? What do they need help with? Where are they excelling? And are you using them to the fullest extent of their their training and their licensure? Are you, you know, getting them involved in projects that they want to be involved in? Um, so just keep that in mind, performance issues um, and how it links back to leadership. Now talking about proper compensation, um, just note here, you know, sometimes unfortunately we want to give raises, we want to make sure everybody's compensated um, appropriately and fairly, uh, and oftentimes where, where we kind of feel the rub is with pay increases, and you know, sometimes the market is not really going to allow us to offer pay increases. Um, you know, the economy, if the economy starts to see a decline, if we see freezes in pay or hiring freezes, um, that would kind of necessitate that we're not going to be able to offer those pay increases to our employees. Now, typically, you know, we're going to see a 1% to 3% increase across the board. I mean, companies that are very financially healthy are able to do that every year. But the last thing we want to do is get employees to have in, have in that 
or have employees in that mindset that every year when they get a performance appraisal, they're going to get a raise because, like I said, sometimes the market won't allow for that increase. So we don't want to encourage um, the thinking that there's a linkage between the two of a performance appraisal and raise um, just in case that, you know, the company itself is not able to offer that raise um, for a variety of reasons. Um, like I said, market, market freezes um, and the economy decline. So a couple things I just want to note here. I'm going to end the lecture here. We've got two more slides that I'll scroll through. Um, you know, it, it oftentimes it's often you know it's desirable to seek to promote from within. Um, you know the employee; they have a long-standing history with the company. But don't get so um, you know so focused in on promoting from within. Um, even though it can be a little expensive to recruit outside the organization, sometimes you may need to look outside um, your organization or your department because you want to bring in new ideas, fresh ideas, somebody who can kind of look outside, you know, take a take a look outside the box um, and, and may bring the next innovative idea into your organization. So like I said, I'm going to end here. And we've got two more slides. The last slide ends on a video. I want to make sure you guys take a quick look at that video. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, now this is the video I want to make sure you guys watch. I'm not going to play it in the context of this lecture, um, but it is accessible to you through your PowerPoint slides. Um, so just talking about why succession planning um, is, is very essential, especially for a manager um, and a supervisor. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to contact me and let me know. Thank you.